Okay, everyone, here goes my tutorial on Google Meet Breakout Rooms. Now, I'm going to be moving pretty quickly. I'm not going to do what I typically do and explain the why behind everything because this video is already going to be kind of long. So I'm just going to sort of dive into the specifics and just kind of show you the steps I take and maybe mention a little bit of the why. But I just want to say this as a disclaimer that I did not go to the developer website first and watch their great YouTube video showing me how to do it. I sort of just set it up on my own and then figured out as I led my first breakout room what was good about it, what was not so great about it, what was um, what I could change about it or what I could do to make the experience a little bit easier for elementary students. So I have used this Google Meet breakout extension with both elementary students and my staff. So hopefully this tutorial is helpful and will quickly show you the steps I took to set it up the way I needed it to be set up. All right, here I am at our school website. Really quickly, I just went to our online resources. I added the extension here. And if you scroll down the list on the approved software list, on the uh, approved software and cloud resource list, it's right down here. It says Google Meet Breakout Room. When you click on Google Meet Breakout Room, it will take you to the store to add the extension. I already have it added. I know it's the right one because it has a purple B. The purple B shows up in the upper right-hand corner. So from here, this is where you set it up. Once you install the extension, it's going to ask you to authorize and approve with your Google account and that's what you're going to do. So as you can tell, I'm already lo logged in with my Google account because I've authorized and approved it. Now, few things. Immediately, I jumped, I took a look at the rooms, I took a look at the courses. I didn't change anything in my settings. It really wasn't necessary for me, but there are a lot of customizable things you can do in the settings. I went straight to courses and I created a class, okay? So you're going to create a class here just called classes. Okay, or you can call it fourth grade or you can call it staff. Now, the first time I set this up, I did. I had a different course for every single class I taught, but that was just way too much maintenance. And then I realized you just really need one called class, whatever you want to call it. Okay, class. From here, I'm just going to click save. That's it. Be sure to always save. A lot of times I didn't save and then I lose everything. So the blue button here that looks like a little old floppy disk is a save. Save, plus for add, made a mistake, undo or remove. So I made my course first. Now I'm going to go over to my rooms. From rooms, notice I have my course here. So I'm going to choose class and begin setting up rooms for my class. Now, most of our classrooms have no more than 24, 25 students. So I really wanted each group to have about five students per group. So I knew I needed five classes. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few classes here. And as you notice, I am just adding them. I've got the main room, which is very important because I train my students to know that the room that they go into every morning to meet with me or to meet with their classroom teacher is known as their main room on the banner. So that's the main room. So then we have one, two, three, four, five breakout rooms. Okay. And I'm just going to call these room one, room two, room three, room four. Now those of you that aren't really that bothered with being fancy, might just leave it as room one, two, three, four, five, and your students maybe can handle that. But because I work with elementary students, I work with students who need visuals. So I like to go to get emoji and me, I'm all about the food. So I like to take just some of these and I'm just going to choose the fruits right at the top. If you just choose the fruits at the top and then you can say to your students, oh, choose the apple. So I've got an apple. I'm going to have a watermelon student, a little watermelon. Okay. Put a little space in there. I'm going to have a cherry. Let's add the little cherry in there and a space. Maybe a some grapes. Okay, some purple grapes. I've done this with shapes, foods, and maybe a pear. How about a little pear? Oh, a kiwi. That's going to be fun. Let's use kiwi. So we'll use a kiwi. Okay. So now I have my visuals, my room set up with the fruit that I want. And then from here, all you have to do is click save and it saves and automatically creates meet links. Now, some of you all are thinking, well, then why don't I just create five different breakout rooms and share the, the meet links? Well, because this breakout room does give you certain capabilities that you don't have when you just create five different links. Capabilities such as muting everyone, unmuting everyone broadcasting to all of the rooms, showing your camera to all of the rooms, closing all of the rooms. So it really does have some cool features that really make it unique, all right? But I will say it is definitely for someone who has the ability to multitask. I also recommend, unless you are really quick 
that you maybe have a moderator or someone who does this for you, or if you're running the technology, you're doing it for someone who has a lesson that you've collaborated with to come up with the best idea about how to manage your breakout rooms. Now, I was able to manage and instruct myself, but I also have a three monitor setup and I'm pretty quick, okay? So I do recommend that you either practice, start small, and just be someone who's willing to learn and be flexible, okay? Okay, so moving forward. So I'm going to pull up my Google Meet. Now, this is my Meet, and I'm already logged into it. This is the same Meet that is on my Google Classroom banner because it is important that whatever Meet your students are used to going to, that is the link you want your main room to be. Okay, for instance, I'm going to open up another tab, and I'm going to go to my Google Classroom. Now, my students and my staff are used to just going to the link that's in my banner, okay? They click the link in the banner, and then they enter the classroom, okay? So that's what I have open over here already. I need to get this link and make sure this link that is in the banner is the link that my students use. So I'm just going to click the copy link. You can also just click up here in the URL. Actually, you just want to get it right there, right at the end of the last three letters. And you're going to click copy. And over here, you're going to ensure that your main room link is that one. Because if it's not, and you just left it at the default link, then when you generate your breakout rooms, all of your students are already in this other room. So you want your main room to be synced, okay? Another very important tip. This grid view fix that we're all using that's fabulous and lovely so we can see all of our students, if you have that enabled, do not have it enabled where you only show the students with video. Because if you only show the students with video, which might be great for, you know, during your class if you just want to see the kids that have their video on, but it kind of messes up your breakouts. So make sure that you either disable grid view or if you have it enabled, do not have it checked to enable participants with a video. Okay, I really like GridView, and I wish that Google Meet offered that more when you look at the settings that they offer or more of a larger grid, but I don't really like the GridView fix when I'm actually presenting to my students. I like to just see me in the presentation, and I just think sometimes I get lost when there's too many people in the grid. Okay, now back to what I was saying. So now I've made sure that my link here, my main room, remember all of my students are in there with me, my main room, I've copied that, I've pasted into my main room, I've clicked save, okay? All my rooms are ready. My students, now I have to make sure I put them in groups, okay? So this is what I do to, in, to put them in the groups. Go back to the Meet tab. Over here, when you click on Assign Breakouts, from here, you can read this information, or you can just click this copy button, and you can see all of the students. When you click that, when all of the kids are in the chat, you just click the students button, copy them, assign breakouts, copy them, and they will automatically, every student that's in your meet at that time, or every staff member, will then be just put into even groups based on the number of students and the number of groups that you've created. And remember, we have five groups, okay? So my group of 25 students will all be put into equal amounts into the five different breakout groups. I wish I had 25 students in here so I could show you right now, but trust me, when you click this link, they're gonna all be put into groups. Now, this is the part that I do for elementary. I learned the hard way that there is a character limit on how many names you can cut and paste from here into the chat. Now, when I say the chat, this is the chat box, as you can see here, because this is where I'm going to have to post the breakout rooms. You know, all of my students know that I post everything in the chat. Look for the chat, right? But because of the character limit, sometimes five to ten kids get left off the list. So then it was a bit panic attack because I was like, I can't cut and paste all of the kids. It's not letting me cut and paste all the students. So I learned the best way is to Populate your students once all the students are in there. Remember, turn off the grid view. Assign the breakout rooms. They're all going to be put in little clusters of five. And then I like to open up a Google Doc. I like to just open up a blank Google Doc. 
And I just, instead of cut and pasting my rooms there, I paste them here, okay? I paste my rooms right into a Google Doc, all right? And then I share that screen with my students. And I say to them, all right, boys and girls, find your name, find your name in your fruit group. Okay, look for your fruit. If you're a strawberry, remember you're a strawberry. If you're a banana, remember you're a banana. So all the students, they find their group. I get get a thumbs up if you found your group. Do you know your fruit? And they all say, yes, they know their group. Yes, they know their fruit. And that's the first step, okay? Because remember, the character limit, it's, it's, they need to fix that. But whatever, it is what it is. And I'm sure it's okay when you have a small class. But when you have about 70 staff members, it's frustrating. So I've cut paste, cut and pasted all my groups. I've shared the screen. They can see what group they're in. I come back to my settings here. I click on assign breakouts. And from here, this is the most important thing. This is what you actually post in chat. So I click here to copy it. Click here to copy. I go back to my Google Meet. And this is what I post in chat. So because the kids have been looking at the Google form, they found, or Google, Google Sheet, they found their name, they found their group, and now this is what we see in the chat. So then I say, if you're a strawberry, go to your strawberry. If you're a watermelon, go to your watermelon. Now, before I post this in the chat, I start my rooms because I want to have them all open. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, so here's my main room. Oops, I'm just going to minimize that. My main room is here, and now I've got my breakout rooms copied, and I'm now about to start my rooms, which is done right underneath the start class, okay? Now, if you click open and sync main room, watch what happens. Boom. It opens the main room that I'm currently in. Look, it already says I'm still in this call, <laughs> so it just opened for me. I don't want to do that one. I've already got it open. I don't need that one synced. I like to just do open and sync breakouts, okay, because I'm already in this one. So watch what happens when I open and sync my breakouts. Here they come. There's one, two, three, four, five. Now, by default, every single one of your breakout rooms open with the microphone off. They open with the camera off. And so from this point, then I paste my rooms and say, Go to your rooms. Notice, look at the little fruits at the top. There's the apple. Room two is the watermelon. Room three, etc. Okay? So I've got my main room. My codes are in there. The kids know what room they're going to. They're clicking on where they're supposed to go. They're arriving in their rooms. But this is, this is where you get to use that great feature of muting everybody. I like to click this button and mute every single room. Watch that again. Okay, I was able to click this button and look, un it turns green. That tells me I can hear everything and it starts getting chaos, right? Because I can hear everybody in all the different rooms. So I go ahead and mute that. Now, once they get into their spaces, I like to just click this unmute button. And this is when I say, hi, students. This is Miss Alexander. You made it to your room. Good job. You know the only rule of breakouts, right? is to talk. So many times in remote learning, we have our students mute your microphone, mute your microphone, right? Well, my rule in breakout is that the students are talking. So I like to broadcast to everyone that I want to see their microphones open, unless it's just chaotic, you know. But I, I really encourage them to be answering the question and to have a discussion about whatever topic I sent them into the breakouts to say. You can even unclick your camera like this, and then all of your students can see you. Now, you can't see me right now because I'm doing this recording and I've got my green screen taking my camera right now, but that will show your camera to all the students. All right? Okay, so that's how that feature. Now, up here, this little one here, once your rooms are open, this is when you can navigate to just a particular room. But I like to just leave, every, just to broadcast every single one of the rooms, all of them together, you know? Um, and instead of just using it one by one. All right, broadcast to all breakout rooms. Unmute, mute, okay? Now, when you are ready for your students to come back, okay, when you're ready, you can use this tab here at the bottom, mute and remove participants. You can pretty much force hang up everyone, okay? You can force all the breakouts to be over and it kicks everybody out, all right? And that's really it. Now, I was going to talk to you a tiny bit about some of the things that I did for elementary. The first one I already discussed on how you cut and paste all of the names into a Google Doc and then you display that and let the kids take a few minutes to find the group they're in. And then you use this one here in the chat so you don't have to worry about character limits. Another 
uh, tip for elementary students. Number two, I tell them that if they didn't get placed in a room for whatever reason, you know, I think I found the fix by not allowing them to, um, by that, that whole grid view fix, I think I found that. But if you tell them that if a kid just arrives late or they came at the last minute and you don't want to repeat everything you say, you just copy and paste this again. You just like, you know, copy and paste it again. And you say to kids, don't click it again if you've already clicked. You say that. Um, the number, you know, then you tell another student, you know, with a new student who just arrived, oh, go to room one, go to room two. And you just tell them to pick a room. Okay, so that's another tip for elementary students who maybe get left behind. Um, my third tip for elementary students, and this one really works, is the, the technique of turn your camera off in the main room if you've gone to your breakout room. Because if they turn their camera off, and they all know by now, they all know how to mute, and they all know how to turn their camera on and off. So if they turn their camera off, that tells me that they're, they found their breakout room and they turn off their main room. So, and the way I tell them, I said, you know, it's like walking in a room, walking, leaving a room and turning the light off. So that's what the students hear from me when I'm training them. I say, as you leave the main room, turn the light out, turn your camera off, go into the breakout room. Then I broadcast to everyone when I'm ready for them to come back. I use the broadcast tool and I say, hi students, you have 30 seconds until the breakout is over, 30 seconds to finish up your thought and then I will meet you back in the main room. Now, Remember, they all know the main room because if they get lost or they close the browser, they can always get back to the main room by just going back to your Google Classroom, clicking on the banner link, and coming back into the main room. So those are really the three tips for elementary school students that I use, the cut and paste method of all the names, the, um, the telling a kid just to choose a room if they get lost or forget what they're doing or you forgot to add them to a room or somehow they got missed. Um, and then, of course, the third one is to turn the camera off when they leave, turn it back on when they get back. I also have a tip sheet on, you know, talk when you're in there, ways to, you know, how to have a good conversation about the topic. Um, the one thing I just introduced recently was a Jamboard when they're in their breakout. So now they're figuring out how to leave the main room, go to a breakout, complete an exit ticket or a Jamboard, work on a collaborative document. So these elementary students are doing all kinds of stuff. With the right direction, it's so doable. So really, it's just about engagement, right? I mean, I'm sure you think you could do the same thing, but I found that in the few times I've done this with third graders, they were having some really cool and some really interesting conversations in their breakout. I do remind them that I can hear every one of their breakouts. So, um, but I hope this tutorial was helpful. It's really difficult to see in action unless I have a group of students with me. So maybe next time I'll consider making a breakout with students. But for now, I hope this kind of tells you a little bit about using the breakout. I think it's cool. It takes a little bit of setup work, but it does the trick. You know, the intention is to um, have them collaborate, talk, discuss, and really just keep them engaged. And it does that. So thanks for watching. I'm sorry it's such a long video, but I really wanted to go over each piece. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, here I am again. I wanted to actually show you what it looks like when you do click the uh, remove all from breakouts and what happens, okay? So if I click remove all from all breakouts and I just click this button, they all go and they start to close. So that's what they do. And of course, there's no students in here, so you can't see it. So if you hang up all breakouts, there they go. There it is. You left the meeting. You left the meeting, you left the meeting, you left the meeting, and I'm still in the main room. All right, bye for real now.